So what is going on people and welcome to episode 19 of the Barnsley career mode here on FIFA 21. If you haven't checked the last episode out, I would strongly advise it. But for those of you that have, you will know that in the last episode, we secured promotion to the Premier League via the playoffs. And here we go. The start of the season, it will be the same as last time. We'll do the entire preseason. We will play the first game of the season. So it's going to be a long one. Strap yourselves in. I certainly hope you are looking forward to it. So let's do a little run through then. After getting promoted, we are, of course, in the Premier League. We're pre-season. Um, tournament has been decided, as you can see there, a few of the teams. I've advanced a couple of days because of the re-contracts. Players have left. Players have arrived. So this is the starting eleven for this season. This is how we will line up. As it stands, obviously, if, if signings are made, then it may well change. So Brad Collins in goal, same shape. Most importantly, Brunner, Hellick, Anderson and Ailton comes in on the left-hand side ahead of Ben Williams. Ray, Bearer and Ritzmeyer, after his loan, he is back in and he comes in ahead of Miranda. And then the front three, as normal, Thomas, Woodrow and Freezer On the bench, we have Jack Walton, both the Williams, Rolando Ahrens, Dominic Gape, Robin Shue and Patrick Smith. A number of other players in and around the team. If we have a look at the squad hub, um, so in terms of transfers, then we have three players on the transfer list. Jordan Green was on the transfer list last season. He, we've accepted a bid for him from FC Emmen from Holland. That has come in early doors in the window, so we may well see the end of him fairly soon. Isaac Christie Davis is back from his loan at 23 years old now, 61 overall. He's not going to have a part to play. So I am going to move Isaac Christie Davis on. And we have also put Adama Traore up for transfer. Bless him. He is, um, yeah, he's not had a good time at Bars. He hasn't played a single minute for us and may well be on his way out. A number of players have gone up for loan as well. Jack Aitchison, who was on loan at Stevenage last season, has gone back up for loan. Toby Civic was on loan at Oostend. 68 overall, could have played a part, but with Brunner and Williams in front of him, would have probably wouldn't have seen any game time. So we're going to loan him out as well. Clark Adore, now that Ailton has come in, is going to, well, he only made one competitive start for us last season. So he is going to go out on loan as well. Ramal Palmer going to go out on loan again. Jordan Helliwell, Jasper Moon, and a youngster we called up from the academy last season, Alexander Randall. Uh, they are all on the loan list as well. So hopefully some of these players can go out and get a little bit of football. There are a number of youngsters in around the squad as well that we've called up from the academy. And as you as well may be able to see there, little spoiler. We're looking to strengthen in central midfield, most importantly, to start with in this uh, in this transfer window. A very healthy budget. £36 million we have to spend a lot in wages as well. In terms of the academy, this is how it looks at the moment. Uh, we lost, I think it was Henry Ball in the academy last season. He uh, terminated his contract. He's gone elsewhere, so we won't see him anymore. But yeah, a few players in there to start with. Six in total. And um, yeah, some very healthy looking prospects in there for certain. I'll, so I'll set up another scouting... Um, agreement to go out in England again uh, towards the end of the transfer window if we have money left over then I may set one up into internationally I should say but if we have a look at the board expectations fairly reasonable I would say for this season so youth development sign at least three players younger than 20 with a potential greater than the average overall that's fine brand oh and there's another one sign four players in your youth academy one for each position Brand exposure, some wine signed one player of a different nationality from the one of the club. That should be fairly easy. Just sign a player who's not English. Basically, financial gained 10.8 million earnings from shirt sales within the season. That shouldn't be too hard, I would think. Now we're in the Premier League. Domestic success, they just want us to avoid a, a relegation, but it is a very low priority. So if we went down, we may not get sacked. Although, I'd love to avoid that. Uh, reached around a 32 stage in the FA Cup. And obviously no continental success. So hopefully we can avoid the drop. That is going to be our primary focus this season. If we have a look at the calendar and what is coming up. So we have our friendlies arranged. But the month of August looks tasty, doesn't it? We've played both promoted sides, Bournemouth and Watford at home. 
but then away trips to City and Liverpool. It's going to be a very testing month. We need to pick up wins against Bournemouth and Watford, you feel, if we're going to have any chance of staying up this season. So we will play Bournemouth at the end of today's episode. And then tomorrow, trips to the Etihad and Anfield. That's going to be tough. <laughs> but for now, as we did before, I will sim the friendly games and then I will show you any transfer business that happens. But let's press on with pre-season. So we have the first pre-season game then, just a day after the intro. Zolta Varigam, I believe they're a Belgian side. But yeah, we're just going to quick sim this game, get through it. Side of Berhido, I noticed, was up top for them. And it's a one-all draw. Corley Woodrow creating the goal for us. Side of Berahino grabbing the goal for them. In our group, we have Ken and Sanhausen. They draw 0-0, so we'll be playing them soon. But yeah, a draw to start off, just focused on fitness in this pre-season. But as we said, let's press on. Well, news come in. Jordan Green has gone out. Just 450k added to the budget. But just good to get players offloaded. We have a very bloated squad. All things taken into consideration. We are at friendly number two against Ken. So, Ken, Ken, I don't know. But yeah, um, I think we'll just sim this one again. Players look fairly fit. Hopefully we can pick up a win. And it's a 1-0 defeat. Wonderful. Well, we're probably going to go out of this competition. <laughs> and Sandhausen win as well. Oh, well. It's not looking good for us. It's going to be all about transfers then, do you feel? We've had an offer for Isaac Christie Davis as well as Alexander Randall. He is a, his natural position is a CF. So we've changed him to a striker. I don't know why a CF. I just should have just said centre uh, forward. But yeah, good to see a big come in for Isaac Christie Davis. Uh, I'm not sure who it's coming for. Reindorf at Altax. I'm guessing they're a lowly, lowly German side. We will try and negotiate and get him a little bit more out of them. We can, uh, according to the chief exec, get almost 600k for him. Good to see that he's still in full kit. Uh, so let's propose a new transfer fee. We'll say 590 and see what they say. They're happy to accept that. That's absolutely lovely. So hopefully then we will get a little bit more money for Christy Davis. We will try change Randall's position as well to a striker. Hopefully that will make him more appealing to some size to get him on loan. Right, the day of the third preseason game, scout reports starting to come in, which is good. So we are, uh, or well, scouting options starting to come in, I should say. So we've sent the scouts out to have a look at them. We'll quick sim this one against Sandhausen and it's a one-all draw. Dominic Fries are grabbing the goal, so we are out of the pre-season competition. But no problem, we can just focus on transfers. Okay, so a player has been identified. He is on the shortlist. Lucas Sangali is a guy that I scouted heavily last season. Would love to have brought him in. 73 rated, so he would come in and immediately be one of our best players. He can play central midfield, attacking midfield, or on the right wing. Yeah, I really like the look of this guy and the fact that I, you know, looked at him a lot last season appeals to me even more. And well, they wouldn't want a great deal for him, so should add. Between 3.9 and 4.25, he is in the last year of his contract, 26 years old. I think we're going to go in for Lucas Sangali. As always, we will start the bidding at the minimum end of what they want and hopefully, because he's in there, his last year, they won't want too much. So let's go... 3.9, start the bidding, see what they say, and they're very happy for us to have 3.9 million, excellent. Okay, so he's on 19 grand a week, we will negotiate, and we could well have our first signing of the summer in very quickly. This would fill one of the board objecti objectives, I've turned uh, Australian there, or New Zealand, either one. Um, yeah, board objectives, very quickly. Okay, so he wants a crucial squad, well, that is fine. Turn into Jonathan Ross there. Well, three-year deal. I am more than happy to give you a three-year deal, sir. Disregard the lease clause. He wants a little bit of a bump in wages. I'm pretty sure that's like the first time that's we've experienced that. We'll remove his bonus. Wants a little bit more in wages, but that is absolutely fine. And there we go. I love that transfers are sorted so quickly on this game. Lucas Sangali is in the van and is our first signing as a Premier League side. There we go, Sangali straight into the first team. We've taken out Berra, put him to the bench, and he will partner Richmeyer. So a new look central midfield for us this season. As a result, 
may not be a popular decision amongst Barnsley fans, but I've got Callum Styles on the loan list. So uh, hopefully we'll get some bids in for him. Um, in terms of squad numbers, Ailton has got uh, Alex Mowat's old number. He's number 27. Rolanda Aaron's is 29. So Adeboy Ajo's old shirt number. Uh, I don't think there's much else. Oh, and this, yeah, the, the captain this year, because Ben Williams has been replaced, Helic is going to be our captain for this season. But for now, I'll... Uh, I'll have a look at another area of the squad that maybe we can improve and we'll set some scouts out and hopefully we can make some more signings. We've got a loan offer from Clark O'Dor, a loan with an option to buy from FC Copenhagen. I will uh, negotiate that, delegate to my assistant just for a one-year loan and see what they say. I was mentioning shirt numbers, actually. Um... And I didn't even mention Sangali's been given the number eight shirt in real life. Herbie Kane has the number eight shirt, but obviously we don't have Herbie Kane in the team uh, in this save. So Sangali has the number eight. And you may not be surprised to know that uh, yeah, I have decided to look for a new goalkeeper. <laughs> so uh, we will see what comes of the search. Okay, Isaac Christie Davis has gone a little bit more money in the coffers. We have another. Offer for Clark O'Dor, another loan to buy, this time from RC Lons. Or Lens, I think it's Lons. Um, can I... Uh, I can't answer their thing, apparently. Waiting for FC... Oh, no, yeah, I can. Delegate. It's just me being silly. Again, we'll delegate, see if we can get just a loan deal for Clark O'Dor. And Copenhagen have agreed to our proposal for a one-year loan for Clark O'Dor, so I will be accepting that. Maybe he will go out on loan to Denmark and get some first-team football. Okay, so Lons have accepted our proposal of just a one-year loan deal, so I will accept that. And Galatasaray have made a loan to buy offer for Toby Civic. Interesting. Well, again, I will delegate that to the assistant just to get a one-year loan deal. Civic may be a player that we're interested in in the future, so I don't want to lose him just yet. But yeah, Galatasaray could be a good destination for him. Okay, well, talks have broken down between Odor and Copenhagen, so hopefully he'll go to Lens. Galatas Galatasaray have accepted the terms for a one-year deal for Civic, so we will accept that. And Corley Woodrow uh, has been, we're now satisfied. Okay, so Woodrow's already peaked training this season. That's not ideal. Well, we have identified three more keepers. Marco Morosi from Coventry, Ruben Yanez, who is a free agent, and Adam Davis from Stoke. To be honest, he's a little bit older, a couple years older than uh, the other two, but I like the look of Adam Davis Decent keeper, 71, so it would be a bit of an improvement as well on Brad Collins. Um, yeah, he's a uh, decent, solid keeper. I think could uh, be a real improvement for us. We could get him fairly cheap as well, so a good addition to the squad on a budget. So I think I'm going to go in for Adam Davis. We'll start again, as always, worth 1.4. They will take as low as 1.45, supposedly, so we will certainly look... For that, there you go, one, four, five. Submit the offer and see what they say. Happy to accept it, excellent. Well, how much is he on? He's on 12 and a half grand a week. I think I just saw that flash up. So again, wages shouldn't be that much of a problem either. Hopefully we can make our second signing. Squad roll, I will offer him important. I think he would come straight in to our goal and he's happy with that. Three year deal at 29. I mean, he is a goalkeeper, so I'm happy to accept him. Accept a three-year deal. Disregard release clause. He wants a little bit of a rise in wages. We may now see, may well now see that as a bit of a theme. The fact we are a Premier League side. I will remove the bonus, which will probably mean he'll ask for a little bump up. Okay, no, nope, he's happy to accept that deal. Excellent. So we have a new starting goalkeeper, which is wonderful. So I'll put Davies in the team, and we will go from there. Well, as you can see, Adam Davis has been added to the starting lineup. He's going to come in. That means, unfortunately, Jack Walton has been transfer listed. We won't 
be needing him, I highly doubt, with a couple of uh, keepers in the youth academy as well. It's unlikely that um, we'll yeah, need Walton at all. If something does happen to Brad Collins, then we can call up one of the young keepers. So Walton may well leave us. And my next port of call is a centre-back, maybe a top-quality centre-back. I say top-quality. Certainly a decent centre-back. Probably look to replace Alpo Harm and just um, maybe a bit more of a feasible option for us. May well, you know, partner Helic at the back. Anderson has done a good job, but I just feel we need that extra strength and depth. So it needs to be a little bit ruthless. But yeah, the next portal call, hopefully a decent centre-half. Bidor has gone on loan to RC Lens, so hopefully he will get some good first-team football and we will see him grow. Felt a bit bad that he didn't get any game time, really, last season. But uh, yeah, just one of those things, unfortunately. Okay, another player has been identified centre-back Brian Berent, who I scouted last season. 69 overall, can play centre-back or CDM, is a free agent. Yeah, like I said, I was looking at this guy last season. He's a little bit older at 29, um, but I think would provide good experience if we had maybe Helic and Anderson starting, Berent and Solbauer in reserve. That was our two younger centre-backs starting, but very good experience in behind wasn't necessarily looking to upset Anderson and Helic as they were such a good partnership last season and I think this one will be nice and cheap and be decent for the squad we might want a little bit of money so I'm just going to make sure we've got that in the budget otherwise we'll go ahead and try and sign Baron. okay so he wants an important squad role he's not going to get it but I don't want to upset him so I'm just going to accept it in terms of a length of deal, I'll offer him two years. He's happy with that. Disregard the release clause. Wants 15.5k, which is lower than the recommended wage, which is fine. We'll counter, remove the bonus. He may well want a little bit more. Nope, he's happy with that. Okay, Berent's in the van. Another decent addition. We'll have a look at who else we can bring in. Okay, a couple of bits of news then. Firstly, Civic has gone out on loan to Galatasaray, so hopefully we'll get some football. But we've had an offer for Patrick Schmidt. Chaika Rizespor from Turkey have offered us 2.4 million. Now, I wouldn't be adverse to selling Patrick Schmidt. I won't lie. If we can get towards the top end of what the chief exec thinks we can get, then I may well accept an offer so we'll go in to negotiate he was so good for us last season schmidt but maybe we can make a little bit of money here let's go 3.25 that was the top end of what they thought we could get 2.4 plus a sell-on clause okay well we will keep the sell-on clause because you're annoying me and just go back to what we said so what they say 2.7, they are coming up, so we will oh, propose that again. I'm not going to sell him on the cheap because he was so good for us. They're coming up again. Come on, boys, give me what I want. No, they're not having it. Fine, if they don't want to pay what we want for him, then he won't go. Schmidt stays for now. Right, so we're looking at central midfielders again, and we've got another couple identified. Jeremy Dudziak from Hamburg, Tunisian, interesting, I thought he was German, I've had experience with this guy before, probably on Foot Manager I think, 73 overall, also got Paik Seng Ho from Darmstadt, who will have one of our central midfielders, 71 overall rated, is a couple of years younger, he's got a 5 star weak foot as well, but I like the look of Dudziak, only 25, so still can grow, he's got some decent physical stats there lots of pace and the way that we play our uh, central midfielders with the runs that they make that pace could come in handy can play C central midfield cdm and right back despite being left footed i like the look of dudziak wouldn't cost it cost a little bit more than what we've been paying but again in the premier league that's certainly a very good price. So I think I'll make sure that I've got the money in the budgets and uh, we'll probably look to sign Dudziak. Right then, we will start, as always, at the lower end. Might have to pay a little bit more than he's worth. Start at 4.7 and see what Hamburg say. They want 5.4 plus a sell-on clause. Okay, let's remove the sell-on clause. Offer a straight 5.4. 
They're happy to accept that. Okay, just over 5 million potentially for a new midfielder. He's on 18.5k. Let's go in and negotiate a contract. We'll probably come straight in, probably replace Rich Meyer in the starting lineup and go alongside Sangali. So he will. I will offer him an important squad role. He wants crucial. I'm happy to oblige. In terms of length of contract, four years. Happy to give that to him at 25 years old. Should see his best years. Disregard the uh, release clause now. In terms of wages, we'll offer him what he's on at 18 and a half, and see what they say. Oh, okay. They're not interested in that. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll wait a couple of days, see if we can't go back in for him. And, uh, yeah, I'll uh, hopefully bring you a signing him. <laughs> We've had an offer for Alpo Harm from FC CFR Cluj, Katalin Golovka, and 99,000. Well, I'd have no idea who this Golovka player is. 68 overall on the right-hand side is probably not a player that we would be interested in. But we'll negotiate, see if they don't have a player that we might be interested in. Okay, so let's see who else they have. They're offering us a winger. We're looking for a central midfielder. Do they have any decent centre mids? Bordenu might be an option. Do Damian Dokovic. Both slightly older. Tell you what, let's go. It too seems to be, well, he's the highest value. 2.1 at 67 rated. Let's go in for... Bordanu, and then let's um, just go for a straight swap and see if they won't give us Bordanu. See what they say. They're offering us a new player, Chip Siu. Interesting. We'll see what what's he. We don't even know his overall. Do we know his overall rating? No, I don't think. I can see it, which is interesting. Okay, well, if they're not interested in giving us chip suit and they don't want to let Bordenu go, let's try Damian Dokovic. We will go for a straight swap once again and see what they say. And again, they don't want to let him go either. Okay, well, I'm not interested in any other of their players then. So we'll just ask for the straight up cash for him. 1.1 million and you can have him. And they're happy to do that. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so Harm may well be on his way to Romania then. Okay, so Alpo Harme has gone to Romania. Didn't play for us at all last season. Well, with Bernhard coming in, that was going to be even less likely that it would see any minutes. So we've got a deal for him. Over a million pounds isn't too bad, to be fair. Okay, well, this is an interesting bid that's come in from Red Bull Salzburg for Bradley Collins. 2.3 million. He is my backup keeper. But again, wouldn't be adverse to selling him. And that means if we did sell him, we'd probably keep Jack Walton. So we'll go in and negotiate for Bradley Collins. See if we can get towards the top end of what our chief executive says we can get. 2.3 million. Let's propose a new bid. Let's say 3.1 million and he's yours. They're staying at 2.3. Well, I'm not wasting my time negotiating then. See you later, Red Bull Salzburg. That was very quickly handled. Okay, we've had an offer for Jack Walton from Willem in uh, Holland. They've offered us just over a million pounds. And to be honest, I'm just going to accept that straight up. So we could well see the back then of Jack Walton. Probably just as well we didn't sell Brad Collins, to be honest. Had another offer for Walton just a day later from Den Denilisbor. Denilisbor? Deniz, Deniz Lisbor. Something like that. 1.1 million, we'll accept that as well. Right, attempt number two at negotiations with Jeremy Dudziak. He wanted crucial squad role. That's fine uh, in terms of a length of deal. He had a four-year deal. He's happy with that. Disregard release cause. Okay. 
So I offered him one grand more than that last time, and he just got up, walked away, wasn't interested. <sighs> Waited a week for very little, to remove his bonus, submit the offer. He wants a little bit more, but that is fine. Finally, we get our man in Jeremy Dudziak. Well, he will go straight into the team. Well, in terms of a first team squad, I'm pretty happy. I think we've got strength in depth, which is good. Obviously, to compete in the Premier League and towards the top end, we will need much, much better players. But I think that will come with time. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm happy. Obviously, we'll keep scouting, see if there aren't any, you know, absolute world, well, I say absolute worldies, much better players that we can't attract to the club. Uh, unless players out go out, then we may, you know, look to replace them. But I think the majority of my business is done. So I'll do the bits in the in the background. We'll sort of get a couple more U scouts in, send them out as well. And uh, yeah, we will just press on now to the first game of the season. Jack Walton has gone to Willem. His talks broke down with the Turkish team. I'm not going to try and pronounce it again, but he has gone out on loan. Pablo Miranda um, been playing pretty well. I'll think about it. I've actually, despite his heroics last season, put Miranda as available for loan. So we'll see if any bids come in for him. Now that we've signed Dudziak, I feel like he might see less and less action with the options that we have. We'll attend the press conference, though. I think we are just about ready for this first game of the season at home to Bournemouth. Can your boys beat the drop this season? Um, we're ready for the fight. I'm not going to say the players are good enough because this really isn't a Premier League squad. Is Davis ready to make an impact? Um, he'll make a difference, I believe, for sure. Hopefully, he's a real improvement on Brad Collins. <laughs> Is Dudziak ready to make an impact as well? He'll certainly make a difference. Come straight into the side. A very good player for us. But yeah. Newcastle win the first game of the Premier League season. Who did they play? That is the question. If we have a look at the table, they beat Southampton 3-0. Well, there you go. But, yeah, it's all for us to do now. If we can start the season with a win, I'm certainly more optimistic. Well, isn't it exciting to have the Premier League graphics around the ground? And then just in the menus and everything. Barnsley in the Premier League is certainly something I think we are all looking forward to. Bournemouth today's opponents came up with us last season. I was going to run through the team, but I appear to have skipped that step. So we will just crack on with the game. Interested to see how these new players bed themselves in. A number of signings made in this summer transfer window. But hopefully some of the old faithful can step up as well. That's the act. Oh, he's got away from his man. Anderson gets a toe in. Very good play. Drew will find Dudziak. Freezer's got a bit of space here on this left hand side. Take it a long way with Dominic Freezer. Gets in and will find Sangali. And it's a goal on debut for Lucas Sangali. Comes straight into the side. We signed him from Real Sociedad in the summer. Well, he's made an immediate impact. Those runs from midfield that we were talking about. Good run from deep. Just finds himself in a nice position with the easiest of finishes. The new Bournemouth keeper couldn't keep that one out. And we take a 1-0 lead. Well, there goes the half-time whistle from the referee. Very good performance from us so far. We've looked solid. And, well, we've converted the chances when we've needed to. Can we get our first three Premier League points? Back inside. Now Woodrow. Waits for support. Dudziak is arriving. Just hold it up. Sangali. Can he have a strike from distance? <laughs> this man is certainly going to be a good player for us. Lucas Sangali. What a hit from the boy. What a finish. I think that might be one of the first outside the box goals we've scored this, e this save. He's just hit that with venom. He's rifled that into the corner. Keeper's got absolutely no chance. We take a 2-0 lead. Launched forward by Lerma. But Brunner is going to get that one up and away. Woodrow's just done enough. Ray. Woodrow. Back to Sangali. Find Dudziak. Onto his left foot. 
and Dudziak tried to put that one in the corner, but his effort wasn't really troubling the keeper. But um, we've looked phenomenal. I know we're only playing Bournemouth, so we shouldn't get a two ahead of ourselves. But even so, in this fixture last season, they were pretty good. Although I think we did pick up a 1-0 win against Bournemouth last time out at home. But as it saw there in the top-hand corner, we have a trip to the Etihad in the next game. So it's going to be vastly different. Two very tough games in the next episode. Sangali, I'm going to hit this one, you know. Oh, it's a good block by Steve Cook. And the ricochet falls to Dan Juma, and they'll get it away. But that is going to be game, and it is. There goes the, uh, the full-time whistle. And well, you'd have to say, that was very comfortable. A really solid 2-0 win to start our season. I feel confident with this team. That felt so much better. Bournemouth had one shot the entire game. Sangali with a 10 rating. I enjoyed that and I'm looking forward to this season. Liverpool smash Sheffield United 3-0 as you would expect. But there we go. I'm looking forward to this season as I've already alluded to. Miranda disappointed to be left out. But sorry, I think Sangali and Dudziak probably justified their selection. We sit in fourth after one game. Thick at the end of the season now. That'll be fantastic. We won't check on the table now because as you can see there, it's only one game in. Not much point, but we will cover what is happening in the next episode. We've talked about it enough. We start with a trip to the Etihad and then a home game against Watford. And then we finish with an away trip to Anfield. That is certainly going to be a juicy one. But guys, if you have enjoyed this longer episode, I hope you smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our Premier League journey. And I will see you in the next one.